Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'd like to answer a question that I get all the time. I usually answer it within the board repair videos themselves, but I've never answered it in its own dedicated video. This question is, why don't I ultrasonically clean the boards off before I start working on them? Some people ask out of curiosity, some imply that it's fundamentally unprofessional that I don't do this because it seems lazy or like I'm trying to do the job half-assed. It's actually quite the opposite. The reason that I don't clean the boards before working on them is because this allows me me to do my job better than if I were to clean it before I started working on them. Allow me to explain. We don't always figure out why something is not working by using this highly intellectualized process that says, uh, you know, we're, we're just, we have all these equations on a board and make a bunch of measurements, and then we combine those measurements with the equations, and then, okay, it must be this resistor that's bad. That's not often how this works. Very often, Rather than intellectualize things, we look at the board and that's going to tell us what's going on. So let's say that you're having a problem where there is, uh, let's say you're having a problem with no green light, right? You could be having an issue with adapter sense being high because of a bad DC inboard. You could have an issue with U7000. You can have an issue with U7001, U6901, U6900. Many different chips could be uh, a problem there. However, Rather than try and test every single individual component, which could take you a long time and in some cases may not be possible without actually swapping them, what I like to do is just simply look at the board. So here is one case over there where washing the board would screw me over. This is on the wiki at wiki2.rossmangroup.com. Let's see if... There we go. So this is probably barely noticeable to you. I have to really zoom in to get to it. But you see these little pieces of green over here? See that little bit of green, little bit of green, little bit of green? Even though the area looks fine, even though none of these components over here are corroded, there is actually corrosion underneath the system management controller. And this is something that you're not really going to find after you do the cleaning. Once you do the cleaning, this green stuff over here is going to be gone, but the solder balls underneath this chip are going to be bad. Now, you may be able to figure that out after maybe 20 or 30 or 40 minutes of troubleshooting, but wouldn't it be nice if you could see it immediately, right then and there, so that you could actually address it, rather than drive yourself crazy later? Because many times, some of the components that may be corroded or not functioning, once you've cleaned away all the little bits of green, you may never be able to see that again. And you're testing may not lead you to this specific chip being bad. It may be any one of, let's say, 10 components that could be causing your issue. And because it's not economically viable to spend the time to figure out which one of those 10 components it is, the board winds up being called a no-fix rather than being fixed because you washed away the corrosion. All right, let's take another example that I have here. This was actually from a newbie. Now, this is from someone who is who is new, who is really just kind of learning. They fixed their issue, they replaced their chip, and they didn't see this over here because they had cleaned the board prior to working on it. Now, I can see this clear as day. I can see this without a microscope and see that this is an unacceptable solder joint and that that needs to be corroded. But if you're new, you may not see this immediately. However, I can almost guarantee that if you didn't clean the board before working on it, you you would see a little pile of green on top of that, and that would alert you to the fact that you need to replace that resistor. But if you do the cleaning and then only address the th things that are absolutely destroyed, you're going to miss little bits like that that would have been pointed out to you with the green. By the way, when I talk about green, I'm talking about corrosion, not green as in the conformal coating that you see over here used on this probe point. Uh, another example of this could be seen over here. So if you just take a look at this section of the board, this is really getting into the point where I start to drive my employees up a wall because I will look over their shoulder and I will see this. And you may think this is ridiculous, but I've, I've done it to them before where I look over my shoulder and I say, look at that cap. And they go, what cap? And I go this. And they go, how do you see that? But I, I do see this. And I've gotten to a point where I can see this looking over someone's shoulder at the board. This cap would have had a big pile of green on it, as would each of these individual vias. So one over here, two over there, three over there. But if you ultrasonically clean the board and get rid of it, you're left with a much milder scatter pad, salt and pepper pattern over here rather than a pile of green. And you could see I, I uh, circled them in this picture over here. So this is, a, this is a questionable, 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 questionable. And that cap was bad and was keeping this particular machine from turning on. And you have 
other examples that are really, really just obnoxious, like, for instance, this one. So this is a chip that seemingly was doing its job. But when you turn it around like this, that's a really small piece of green over there. Like, you can barely notice that. That's barely, it's not, it hasn't corroded the solder joint at all. And it hasn't, like, you know, removed any vias. That hasn't removed any pro points. But that tells me that liquid was on that chip. And if liquid was in the area of that chip, perhaps that means that that chip has malfunctioned. And even though it seems to be doing what it's doing, let's say every power rail is going up and shutting off, every rail is going up and down quickly, and I can't tell which one of them it is, I could be at the point where, okay, A, it could be literally any resistor or cap on the board, at which point I give up because that's way too open-ended a problem, or B, if I see liquid in that area, then I can say my problem is going to be with the power supply created by this chip. So even though it could be any component, a resistor, or intermittent capacitor, a passive, or it that power chip just so happened to blow up the, the chip that it's actually creating a power line for, at the very least, I can now take this very large board and box the issue in and say it has to be something over here. So even if there are 15 or 20 components involved there, I can say once I've replaced the 15 or 20 components involved in this, if that doesn't solve it, this is a rabbit hole to hell and I give up. You're always looking to, in the, when you're doing this, to um, simplify the issue. What part of the board is it that has a problem? What chipset could it be? What circuit could it be? And because you, you don't want to, the last thing you ever want to do is look at a board that has over a thousand components on it, thousands of different pathways on it, and then go, it could be anything. Because anytime you look at the board and go, it could be anything, we, you're screwed because it's not economically viable to replace every single component on a board. It's not economically viable to test every single component on a board. So by not washing the board beforehand, it allows me to do this. Further, it allows me to save joints that I otherwise may not be able to save or save pathways or components that I otherwise would not be able to save. So for instance, the SMC in this particular picture for this inspection, this wound up not being savable. This needed to be replaced. However, oftentimes if you put some flux on there and you hot air it and you reflow it in a place, you can take those solder joints that would have been washed away by the ultrasonic cleaner and just completely destroyed, and you can actually rebuild them really well with some uh, good flux and some good hot air technique so that it is actually usable. But if you dump it in the cleaner immediately, that that may be washed away and permanently gone. So what I would prefer to do is rebuild it nice and strong. And then once everything's rebuilt nice and strong, then I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. This is a strategy that has worked for me. Now, if I get a board that looks like something just absolutely puked green all over it, in that case, I may ultrasonic it. Because once something is disgusting enough, at that point... I know that virtually every component is going to have to be replaced, or if, if I'm at that point, I'll ultrasonic it quickly just to get rid of the most offensive crap before I start working on it. But when I'm at the point where I need to ultrasonic the board prior to working on it, at that point, I've 99% given up anyway, any hope of it working. One of the times that I will ultrasonic it uh, before necessarily working on it is when nothing is corroded. I look at through under a microscope and nothing is actually corroded, but it has this kind of wine spilled veneer over it where, you know, if you spill, let's say, wine on a, on a laminated table, and it's not like it leaves corrosion, but there's that sticky sheen that's on, that's on the table as a result of the wine spill. That When I see that type of spill on a board, I'll do that because it'll create this intermittent kind of crosstalk between this component and that component, where it's not like it's directly shorting this to that, but it creates this weird-ish kind of capacitive crosstalk shit that will result in random crashing or something working intermittently or just some like that that'll be my Hail Mary if I've really looked over the board there's no corrosion but there's just some weirdness to it maybe there's something hiding under a chip I can't see in that circumstance I'll ultrasonically clean it prior to working on it but that's really the only circumstance where I do that 
After I complete any of my repairs, at that point, I will then ultrasonically clean the board, and I have laid out the procedure that I use for that here, because I've noticed that people who are new to the industry tend to uh, really just kind of over-clean things, thinking more cleaning is more better, and they wind up uh, just destroying the board. This does need some updates with some better pictures, which hopefully Paul will be able to add next week if he has time, but we've created a basic guide on how to, on how to use an ultrasonic cleaner here for people who are new so that they have an idea of how it works. But I will ultrasonically clean the board here. And what I usually like to do with with, uh, with my ultrasonicking is after I've ultrasonically cleaned the board, I like to put it in a vat of alcohol to get rid of the water, displace it, put that into the uh, after I've ultrasonically cleaned it, then after the alcohol, put it into another ultrasonic cleaner that has nothing but alcohol in it, unheated alcohol, of course, run it for about a minute or two, and then have it sit in a fan for about an hour, half an hour, uh, or an oven. That gets rid of any remnants that make it look like the board had been put into water to clean it rather than something else. And it really comes out with that nice, uh, nice factory look to it. Hopefully this is helpful for anybody who's just kind of curious why I do that when I uh, am doing my videos. And hopefully this is helpful to you. Maybe it's changed the way you work on things. Maybe you'll find more things that are fixable by using this strategy. And again, one of the things that is incredibly important in this business is the findings you get from corrosion. So if you look at a chip like this, and you look at the side of it, and you see that there's that green thing there, and let's say on the machine, the problem you notice is, let's say, jumping between 24 to 54 milliamps, and you see green on that chip. The next time that you have that issue jumping between, let's say, 24 and 54 milliamps, even if there's no green on that chip, you now remember the last time it happened, it was green on that chip. So maybe that's the problem this time. And you replace the chip and it works. This is how you build a database for yourself as to what's going on with each individual machine. And this is how you can kind of create these little troubleshooting guides in your head. Corrosion is an excellent teacher. It's better than anybody that I had in college. And it allows us to create these types of guides that I have put here. It's contributed a lot to it. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys can help me with contributing to this. So I have all of these guides over here. They're based on contents from many of my videos. Uh, my goal is to build this wiki up using as much of time as that I have that's free as possible to the point where someone who is new to the industry or just wants to fix their own MacBook board or just kind of wants to get started on the Sahabi has a reference that they can go to. And over here, I have a list of all my videos that are in the Border Pair playlist. Some of these are not there. Some people in the Discord are working on it. I didn't notice that some of my, my, um, that some of my Border Pair videos were missing from the Border Pair playlist before someone put them all into a spreadsheet. But as you can see here, there's a bunch of videos that have not yet been entered. People are marking the ones that are entered versus not entered. And the idea here is to go through every single one of the border pair videos I've done over the past about seven years and enter them here. So you have problem, you know, here's how many milliamps was taking or what signal is missing. And here's what wound up fixing it in the solutions guide and have it all be in one centralized location like flashcards to make this something that is just a little bit easier for people to do, easier for them to get into. And, um, Honestly, this is not something that I'm going to be able to do all on my own. I am adding to it as I can. I am having my staff add to this and also, you know, message me pretty much every single one that they do that they know is not in here so that I can then add them in here. But there's, you know, a good 400 plus videos to go through. If even one to 5% of the people that watched this particular video were able to watch just one of my videos make an entry in that log uh, here so that the next person knows I don't have to go through that video, it's already been answered, and uh, makes an entry in the uh, appropriate troubleshooting guide, I would be able to accomplish this entire wiki and go through every single one of my videos in less than one day. And I would highly appreciate it if you would help me in this regard. Taking five or 10 minutes out of your day to go through a video of mine, watch it and enter it into the guide, it's probably not going to help you. It's going to help someone else. However, my hope here is that other people with information that we don't have will enter it into here if they got value out of it. So if someone gets value out of what's in this wiki and is able to fix a laptop for one of their customers that they weren't able to before, perhaps when they figure out something that I don't know or that Chris doesn't know or that Paul doesn't know, that they will then enter it into the wiki so that we can all be smarter together. 
That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video, and I know that some people are just going to downvote and damn near report this to YouTube if I don't pet the kitty, so I will pet the kitty before I go. Bye now.